Welcome to another video. This is an integral that I find many students cannot compute. Not because they don't know their trig or their integration technique, but there's just something missing from other areas of algebra. So, typically, a student would see this problem and immediately the Pythagorean identity shows up, right? Because you know that 1 minus cosine squared x is sine squared x, right? So what we do is we say this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of sine squared x dx. And clearly this is correct. So, who does not know that the square root sign removes the square? When you take the square root of a square, you just get the answer that's there. So we go and say this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine x dx. And then you can integrate sine x, you get minus cosine x, and you evaluate from 0 to 2 pi, you plug in 2 pi, you plug in 0, you get an answer. The beautiful thing about that is that you just generated an answer that is incorrect because of something we have done that is incorrect. Let's get into the video. So like I said, you're not 100% wrong, but you see in math, any partial error can lead to complete error, and that's what's the problem here. Now, the concept is this. Whenever you take the square root of a square, when you take the square root of sine squared x, the answer to this is not equal to x. So this square root does not just cancel this. That only happens if this x is not a variable. because you can compute the number. So the square root of a square is not the root. The square root of a square is the absolute value. So the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. It is so important that this is how you view square roots of functions or variables, rather than thinking it's just a straight up number. Now, if this was a number, Say it was uh, 9, the square root of 9 is 3, not absolute value of 3, because again, the absolute value of 3 is 3, so it doesn't matter, okay? So, but in this case, the answer to this is the absolute value of sine x. If you do not write this here, you cannot get the answer to this integral, and it stems for this concept, that the absolute value of a square Sorry, the square root of a square is the absolute value of the root. Unless what you have here is a number. So, we know that the square root of 25 equals 5. The principal root. Okay, this has come up several times on this channel, and you need to stick to it every time you're doing integrals involving square roots of squares. So, the answer to this is actually the absolute value of sine x. So this is where the integration starts. But what does this mean? Remember, absolute value means plus or minus. When is sine plus? When is it positive? And when is it negative if you go from 0 to 2 pi? Well, just look at the graph of sine. Starting from 0. Ta -da 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 Boom. Starting from 0, this is 2 pi. This is pi. So all the values of sine are positive if you go from 0 until you get to pi. Okay? If you go past pi all the way to 2 pi, it's negative. So what we're saying is this integral is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of this function. We're going to write it this way. It's going to be sine x. If you are between 0 and 
pie. It's going to be the positive version. Okay? For zero less than between zero and I can do it this way, x less than or equal to pi. And then it will be the negative version, negative sine x. The negative version, remember absolute value means plus or minus. Here it is plus, here it is minus. This is the graph of sine x. Watch this. This is the graph of sine x. Okay? Now, or it's going to be um, from pi is less than x, less than or equal to 2 pi. Now, you're free to choose where you want to put the equal to. You can put it here, you can put it here. Just put in one of them. doesn't matter. Okay. Now, this is the graph of sine. But the graph of absolute value of sine looks like this. Just show you. Absolute value of sine from 0 to 2 pi goes from here to here. Remember, when you take absolute value, the output must always be positive. So instead of your graph going down, it bubbles back up like this. This is the graph of absolute value of sine x. f of x equals absolute value of sine x. Just practice this. So as you can see, the area is completely positive, no negative, okay? Because if we had gone without the absolute value bars, you would have gotten some weird answers like zero which doesn't make any sense. Okay, so, how do we integrate this? We just have to create two integrals. One integral is the integral of this from zero to pi, and then the integral of this from pi to two pi, that's all. So this integral that we got here will be equal to the integral from zero to pi of sine x dx, which is the top one, or it's gonna be plus the integral from pi to 2 pi of negative sine x dx. So these are the two options that we have, okay? So we can say that this is equal to, if we integrate sine x, what do we get? Negative cosine x. So this is gonna be negative cosine x evaluated from zero to pi plus, we're going to integrate this. If you integrate negative sine x, you get positive cosine x. So we're going to have cosine x evaluated from pi to 2 pi. And that's it. So let's go here. Just to make things cool, I am going to pull this negative here and just do my evaluation. So if I evaluate, put pi here, cosine pi is negative 1 minus, put 0 here, it's going to be cosine 0 is 1. Nice. Done with the left-hand side. Go to the right-hand side. It's going to be cosine 2 pi is going to be 1. Nice. Minus cosine pi is minus 1. Nice. So you see, what I have is minus, this is going to be minus 2 plus, um, I don't know why I'm using brackets, but I started with it. I'm just going to use it till the end. And this is going to be 1 plus 1 gives me 2. So look at this. This is 2 plus 2 equals 4. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.